William the Conqueror, the first Norman King of England. I was eight years old when my father died. My life was in danger, and I had to learn to fight. When I invaded England, I was a very brave man. I conquered the whole country and kept it safe from attacks. I was from Normandy, in the north of France, and my father was the Duke of Normandy. When my father died in 1035, the barons of Normandy didn't want me to rule because I was only eight years old. Many barons wanted to kill me. For ten years, my life was in danger. Finally, in 1045. I began to rule Normandy with the help of some priests, but a lot of barons were still against me. In 1047, a group of them tried to capture me. But I was able to escape during the night. I rode my horse to Poissy to meet King Henry the First of France. A rebellion against me will be the start of a rebellion against you," I said. The king's army helped me to fight. We won a battle against the barons. After that, I fought many other battles. I conquered more land, and I had a big army of soldiers. I visited England and met King Edward. He had a lot of enemies, people who fought against him, and I had a strong army, so I offered him my help. He didn't have any children, so he offered me the English throne in return for my help. I also met Harold of Wessex, an English nobleman, who was captured in France. I talked to the King of France and asked him to free Harold. Then I met Harold and told him. King Edward promised me the English throne. Harold was happy because he was free. He said, "I'll help you to become king." But when King Edward died on the fifth of January, ten sixty-six, Harold broke his promise and named himself king. I was surprised. I was Norman, but the English throne was mine. Now it was time to prepare for another fight. I wanted to invade England, and I had to plan my attack. I spent a lot of money on hundreds of new ships. I also trained a very large army of soldiers. In September 1066, my ships and soldiers were ready. We sailed across the English Channel on the 27th of September. The waves were high. But the winds were blowing in the right direction. It was a very dangerous journey, and we arrived at Pevensey Bay in the south of England on the 28th of September. When we arrived in England, King Harold and his army were in the north. They were fighting other battles there. The king had other enemies. Other people wanted the English throne too. We got off our ships and waited. While King Harold and his army were quickly marching south, we were having a good rest. When the king arrived at Hastings to fight against us, many of his soldiers were tired and injured. After a good rest, my soldiers and I were strong, healthy, and ready for battle. It was the 14th of October, 1066. King Harold and his army were in a better position because they were at the top of a hill. But they made a mistake when they decided to come down the hill to fight. Soon, we were in control, and King Harold was killed. I became the new King of England on the 25th of December, 1066. My new job wasn't easy. I wasn't very popular among the English people, 
and I had to stop several small rebellions, and I still had to conquer the rest of the country. First, I took control of Dover, a port in the south, and London. I decided to rule England from London. I needed a castle to protect my position, so we began to build the Tower of London. Then, I asked my brothers to rule my new land, and I went back to Normandy to see my family. When I returned to England, I conquered the west and then the north. In 1072, the whole country was mine. Soon there was a new way of life in England. There were Norman laws, and there was a new language, French. The Normans became the rulers. I gave them lands, and the English people worked in their lands. I built a lot of castles across the country. I needed them to protect the country against invaders. I also asked my people to collect information on the number of people in England, and the farms and animals that they had. All this information was written in the Doomsday Book in 1085. <laughs> I died in Normandy in 1087. The next two kings of England, William II and Henry I, were my sons. Saladin, the Muslim leader who fought against the Crusaders. I never lived in times of peace. In my land, there were battles during the whole of my life. I became a good soldier and the leader of a large army. I fought against the Crusaders and a lot of enemy tribes. I was born in the city of Tikrit in Iraq. I was the son of a rich Muslim leader. When I was a child, I lived in Syria. My parents and grandparents told me about the First Crusade, a war between Christians and Muslims. It was from 1096 to 1099. The Christians, who called themselves Crusaders, invaded our land to take control of the city of Jerusalem. Our people lost the war, and it was a terrible time. Our houses were destroyed and a lot of people died. When I was eight years old, the Crusaders attacked us for the second time. I saw a lot of people die. They fought for control of the city of Jerusalem. We fought to protect our land, our families, and our way of life. My parents told me the stories of our tribe. I learnt how to read and write, and I also learnt to ride horses. I wanted to be a great horse rider. If I could ride a horse, I could save my life. Soldiers fought battles on horses, and battles were part of our life. We didn't only fight the Crusaders, we also fought enemy tribes. When I was a young man, I met the oldest men of my tribe. They talked to me about the past. They're thinking about the wrong things, I thought. We have to think about the future. We don't have to talk. We have to fight and attack. I decided to become a good soldier to protect my culture. I also decided to become the leader of the Muslim army against the Crusaders. I needed to meet the strongest soldiers of my time. I went to the city of Damascus and I joined my uncle's army. His name was Shirku and he was a great leader. I became a good soldier with him. When one day my uncle died at a party, I became the new leader of his army. For the next 15 years, I fought a lot of battles. Some of them were against the Crusaders, others were against enemy tribes. 
we lost some battles and we won many others. The battles were hard. We lost many good men, but we also conquered a lot of land. We could never rest because we always had to prepare for new attacks. More men joined my army and I trained them well. I took control of Egypt, Libya, Palestine, Yemen, Gaza, Damascus and Syria. I also became a sultan. The Muslim empire grew into a very big empire. I wanted to conquer Jerusalem, to take it from the Crusaders. But the Crusaders were our worst enemy. They were very strong and they had a very big army. I decided to attack the Crusaders at the Battle of Hattin in 1187. We won the battle and we took control of Jerusalem. I ended 88 years of crusader control of our land. But four years later, the third crusade arrived. The leader was King Richard I of England. His army was strong and he won the Battle of Arsulf against us. The king's horse was killed, so I sent him two horses. I also sent him a doctor because he was injured in battle. The people were surprised. I was a good man. Then we fought another battle and my army won this time. In 1192 I made peace with King Richard because we wanted to stop the war. We made an agreement. Muslims controlled the city of Jerusalem and Christians could come to visit it. I decided to go back to Damascus because I was ill and my job was done. We had control of our land. On my way, I thought about my life. I asked myself, will the Crusaders come back? And my answer was, they will come back. There will be more wars. It was so sad. I prayed for peace. In 1193, I was 56 years old when I died. Genghis Khan, the leader of the Mongolian Empire. When I was born, my parents called me Temujin. But later in my life, my tribe changed my name to Genghis Khan. My new name meant Universal Ruler. It was a good name for a man who conquered so much land. I was born in Asia around the year 1155. We were a Mongolian tribe, and our life was very hard because we lived in desert land. We were nomads. We moved from place to place to find food and water. We also fought for land and stole animals from other tribes. When I was a child, my father was the leader of our tribe. He was a soldier, and he trained me for war. You had to be a good soldier to stay alive in our times. My mother gave me hard jobs. She asked me to cut wood and carry heavy things from one place to another. In the Mongolian Kentia Mountains, winters were very long and cold, and summers were very hot and dry. Both my parents and the mountains helped me to grow into a strong man. When I was nine years old, my father took me to the Ongarat tribe to arrange my marriage with a young girl named Borta. On our way back home, we were attacked by the Tartars, an enemy tribe, and my father died. I was very young to become a leader, so my tribe chose another man. Now my family didn't have a tribe. We became very poor, 
and I tried to help my mother. But our situation was very bad. Things didn't get better when my mother decided to marry a man who had sons. One day, I had a fight with one of my half brothers, and he died. When I was 16 years old, I married Borta, and our two tribes united. I was a strong soldier, and I wanted to protect my family and my tribe. We hoped for times of peace, but soon we were attacked by the Merkit tribe. They killed many of our people, and also took my wife. I was able to escape, and I decided to take revenge. I planned our attack very carefully. I was so angry that I ordered my soldiers to kill every Merkit man. Our attack was successful, and I freed my wife. Borta and I had a good family life, and we had four sons. But life was not easy for us, because our enemies were always watching and waiting to attack. When I was about twenty years old, I was captured by the Taichi Ud tribe, and while I was their prisoner, They beat me, and I had a very bad time. When I finally escaped, I said to myself, This time my revenge will be bigger than ever. I had to plan a terrible attack. I decided to take my time to plan my revenge more carefully than before. I needed a large army, so I united my army with the army of another big tribe. Their leader was Ong Khan, a very powerful man. I now had an army of 20,000 men, but I needed more than a large number of men. I needed the strongest men of all, so I trained them to be strong. Our task was to eliminate all the other tribes. First, in 1196, We attacked the Tatars, the tribe that killed my father. I ordered my soldiers to kill every man in their tribe. Next, we attacked the Taichi Ud tribe. Then we moved on to attack the Naiman tribe. Soon, I had control over a large part of Mongolia. I had a lot of land and more power than ever before. My army was so big that I needed new ways to fight enemy tribes. I sent spies to get information, and then, when the battle started, we used drums and smoke signals to communicate with one another. My new idea worked really well. We won every battle. Several tribes united with us because they wanted to be on our side. My army grew to more than 80,000 men. My soldiers were very good at riding horses, and they had the best weapons. Very often, when other tribes heard us coming, they didn't fight. They chose to unite with our tribe, because they knew that we killed every man from an enemy tribe. My people thought I was the god of the Mongol people, and called me, Genghis Khan. Then problems started. My tribe was very big, and we had very little food. I needed to conquer more land outside Mongolia. We moved on and asked other tribes to join us. But some of these tribes didn't want to join us, because their culture was very different from our culture. They didn't want to become a Mongolian tribe. So we attacked them and killed them all. I conquered a lot of Muslim and Chinese lands. I also conquered the central part of Asia and took control of trade routes from China to Europe. My army had about 200,000 men now. During my life, I not only fought, 
but I also worked hard to look after my tribe. I asked my people to write our law. People shouldn't steal animals or sell women. People who broke the law should die. I was a great ruler and trained my sons to be great soldiers. Be prepared, I told them. Attack the enemy before they know you are there. The future of my empire depends on you. When I died in 1227, my empire was nearly 24 million square kilometers. Catherine the Great, the woman who turned Russia into an empire. I was not Russian, I did not speak Russian, and I did not belong to the Russian Orthodox Church. I also had the wrong name, but I became the Empress of Russia and ruled the country for more than 30 years. I was called Sofia Friederica Augusta when I was born in 1729. I was 16 years old when I got married to my cousin, Peter, the heir to the Russian throne. My marriage was arranged by Elizabeth, the Empress of Russia. The Empress was a strong woman who ruled Russia alone. She wasn't married and she didn't have any children. So she decided to find an heir to the throne. She chose her nephew Peter as heir, and she chose me as his wife. We got married in St. Petersburg on the 21st of August, 1745. After the ceremony, there was a very big party. Everyone celebrated and I thought, is there a true reason to celebrate? I didn't love my husband, and he didn't love me either. I didn't speak his language, so we couldn't talk to each other. I was born in Stettin, Prussia, and I spoke German. I didn't know a word of Russian. Our marriage was unhappy because we weren't interested in each other. Soon the Empress started to worry. Her plans weren't working well. She wanted us to have a child, a new heir to the throne. But soon I had a beautiful baby son. His name was Paul. The next years were a sad and difficult time for me. My baby was taken from me, and the Empress didn't let me see him very often. She wanted to take care of the boy and decide on his education. She wanted to have everything under control. I was very upset. I knew that I had to understand Russian to be able to compete with the Empress. I started to study day after day and night after night. I also needed to change my Protestant religion. I changed my name from Sophia to Catherine and I joined the Russian Orthodox Church. I grew into a strong woman myself. When the Empress finally died in 1762, my husband became Peter III, Tsar of Russia. But this was not good news for me. I was worried about my future. My husband might kill me or put me in prison. 
he wasn't interested in me. I thought about the Empress. When she had a problem, she made a plan. So I made a plan with Prince Gregory Orloff, a man from the army with powerful friends. Soon Orloff and his men put my husband in prison and then killed him. I lied to the people. They thought that my husband died from a stomach illness. On the 22nd of September, 1762, I became the new Empress of Russia. I was 33 years old. I was a young woman with a lot of power. Prince Orloff asked me to marry him, but I didn't love him, and I didn't need a husband. I wanted to become a great ruler of Russia. I was interested in art and education. I opened many schools, and St. Petersburg became a center of culture. I was able to solve every problem I had. When there was danger of a war in Russia because the nobleman didn't like my new ideas, I gave orders to kill their leader. When our borders were in danger, I ordered the army to conquer new lands. Ukraine, Lithuania, Latvia... Belarus, Crimea and Poland became part of Russia. The country became a big empire. I didn't rule Russia alone. In 1774, Grigory Potemkin became my advisor. For 17 years, he helped me to make decisions and he was the leader of the army. I also got help from a lot of other people. People were happy to help me, because when I asked for a favour, I always gave something in return. I was the Empress of Russia for 34 years. I improved the living conditions in my country and turned it into a big empire. I was a great ruler. I changed my name from Sophia to Catherine. Then people changed it to Catherine the Great. Abraham Lincoln the United States president who stopped slavery. I was born in a one-room house and had very little education as a child. To educate myself, I read The Life of George Washington, the Bible, and plays by Shakespeare. I became president of the USA and freed more than three million slaves. I lived with my parents on a farm in the state of Kentucky. Our house was a small cabin with one room. My parents had little education, but taught me some of the most important things in life. Respect and justice were always valued in my house. I was a child when I learnt that life was hard. I worked on my father's farm in both good and bad weather. When I was nine years old, my mother became ill and died. Soon my father began to have problems with the farm because he couldn't compete with the other farmers in the area. They owned slaves who worked for them, but my father did not 
He thought that it was wrong to own slaves and that every man should be free. My father decided to start a new life and he got married to Sarah Bush Johnston. It was the start of a new life for me, too. I became closer to Sarah than to my father. She was kind to me and she became a good stepmother. When I was a young man, I decided to find a job. I went on a boat down the Sangamon River, and I got a job in New Salem in Illinois. My job was to take things down the river to New Orleans and sell them there. This was a great experience. I learned to communicate with people. Then the Black Hawk War started. It was a war against the Indians, and I joined the army. This was another important experience in my life. There must be a better way of solving problems, I thought. After the war, I decided to educate myself. I read The Life of George Washington, the Bible, and plays by Shakespeare. I was interested in the law and politics, and these books helped me develop my ideas. I also opened a shop in New Salem because I needed to make some money while I studied. When I became a lawyer in 1837, I stopped working in the store, and I started an office with William Herndon, a lawyer who was against slavery. I thought that the only way to stop slavery was with political action. So I decided to begin my political career. I began to work for the Illinois State Legislature. In a legislature, laws are decided. I thought that life should be fair for everyone, and it was necessary to have the right laws. When I became leader of the Illinois Whig Party, I began to explain my views in public. I said that I wanted a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. I also said that slavery was not fair. A lot of people didn't share my views. One of them was my fiancé's father, Mr. Todd. He was a rich man who had a lot of slaves. However, Mary and I got married and later had four sons. In 1846, I was elected to the United States Congress. In Congress, people make the country's laws. In 1847, I started work as a lawyer again. It was a useful time because I talked to a lot of people and I learned about their problems. Then, in 1856, I joined the Republican Party and became its leader until, in 1860, I won an election and became president. It wasn't easy. When I became president, seven southern states decided to form a new country the Confederate States of America. The people who lived in these states had slaves. They didn't want me as president because I wanted to stop slavery. On the 12th of April, 1861, I declared war. I wanted to join the North with the South into one country again, and the American Civil War began. It was a sad time for all of us. Two years later, I declared that more than three million people were free from slavery. Now, white people had to pay black people for their work. Many of them didn't want to pay them, but they had to respect the law. In 1864, I started my second term as President of the United States. The war continued until the 9th of April, 1865. We paid a terrible price for the war. 
600,000 Americans died, and the war also cost my life. One day, I was at the theater with my wife when I was shot and killed by John Wilkes Booth. He ended my presidency, but he did not end my cause. I died, but the country was one country again, and slaves were already free. Queen Victoria, the queen who gave her name to the Victorian age. I was one of the most famous queens in the world, and I gave my name to the Victorian age. But when I became Queen of England, I didn't want to be queen. I was very young. I was born in London on the 24th of May, 1819. I was the only child of Edward, Duke of Kent, and Princess Victoria Mary Louise of saxe coburg I became Queen when my uncle, William IV, died in 1837. I didn't want to become a queen. I was 18 years old, and I wanted to have a good time. Also, although I was educated in England, I felt more German than English. I spoke German because my mother was from Germany, and she spoke to me in her language. My father was from England, but he died when I was only eight months old. As soon as I became queen, I learnt that I had a lot of responsibilities, but no power at all. From the beginning, Lord Melbourne, the Prime Minister, told me, Politics are not for kings or queens, they're for politicians. I have to change this, I thought. I'm the Queen of England and Scotland, and I want to make decisions. I want to choose the people who will work for me. Soon, several wives of politicians were working for me. In 1836, I met my German cousin, Albert of saxe coburg and Gotha. And we got married four years later. Our marriage was arranged for us, but we loved each other. We could communicate easily because I could speak his language, and we got on really well. He gave me good advice on money matters, and we took decisions together. We worked as a team. Our problem was that we were very unpopular. I wasn't popular among politicians because I wanted to rule and make decisions. And my husband wasn't popular among the people because he wasn't British. We soon found out that we had a lot of enemies. People tried to kill us several times. One day, my husband and I were travelling on a coach when a man shot at us. His bullets didn't hit us, so we were not hurt. Two years later, the same thing happened again. Then one day, another man tried to kill us, but luckily... He didn't have any bullets in his gun. This is a dangerous job, I thought. At the beginning of my reign, life for British people was very hard. In Ireland, thousands of people died because they had no food. In London, a lot of people didn't have a job and there were a lot of beggars in the streets. I ruled during the Industrial Revolution. It was a time of technological advances. 
factories started using new machines and the world's first trains started carrying things from one place to another. Cities grew fast because people moved from the countryside to the city to find jobs in factories. But factory workers earned very little money and they couldn't buy a place to live. So they lived in very bad conditions in old buildings. I lived in Buckingham Palace. It was a beautiful building in London. I enjoyed a happy family life with my husband and our nine children, five daughters and four sons. But our palace wasn't only a home. It was an important meeting place, too. Many kings and leaders from other countries came to visit us. They liked the beautiful building and the paintings on its walls. Another important building in my time was Crystal Palace. It was in London, too. It was a very large building made of glass. In 1851, there was a great exhibition at Crystal Palace. People from all over the world came to see the new inventions and machines that were shown there. My husband and I often went to the exhibition to meet the visitors. We enjoyed our public life. But one day, in 1861, when I was 42 years old, Albert became ill and soon died. I never recovered from his death. I was the mother of nine children and the ruler of a big country. I had a lot of responsibilities. My servants, the people who worked for me, and government officials tried to help me. But life was very difficult. I decided to stop my public life. During my reign, Britain became the most powerful country in the world. The British Empire grew and became the biggest empire in history. It included India, Australia, Canada and South Africa. There was much more trade. There were more jobs for the people and living conditions were better for everyone. I never visited any of the colonies of the British Empire, but I travelled to Scotland several times. I had a friend there, and I liked to talk about my problems with him. His name was John Brown. People didn't like my visits to Scotland because they thought that I spent too much time there. I knew that I wasn't a popular queen, I also knew that my visits to Scotland were not helping me to become popular. But one day, when I was coming back from one of my visits, a man tried to kill me. To my surprise, people were sorry for me. I became a popular queen, and later when the country celebrated my reign of 50 and then 60 years, people were very happy and showed a lot of respect for me. I kept a diary during my life. I wrote about 2,500 words a day. My notes helped me to think and make the right decisions. I wanted to help my people, and I did a good job. 
I ruled my country for 63 years and seven months, and I gave my name to a period of history, the Victorian Age.'